the title of the presentation yeah, just, is Push just, to Talk Circuit for the IC7300. I can't remember when I first heard about this circuit, whether I was going through the uh, QRZ forums, might have been, or uh, uh, some other place. And this is, a, a, I adapted it from this form and that's a, a working uh, URL if you want to go for much more information about this. And this whole thing was adapted in from a, I think it was in, uh, 2015 uh, QST article, which is mentioned uh, on this website. And uh, so anyway, you can see the uh, attributions of what I've adapted things from here. So the problem, uh, one would like a button to push, uh, which would uh, generate a carrier of about 10 watts or so, turn off the internal uh, amplifier, uh, turn, internal, off the internal tuner. And nothing nothing like that exists on the 7300 and maybe some other ICOM radios, I don't know. Now, if you use ICOM's amplifier that's designed for this radio, that's not a problem because the amplifier will take care of the sending the necessary net signals to the transceiver. But I have an old Yesu uh, uh, 400 watt amplifier and uh, I got to tune it. So let's see what happens when you have that kind of a deal. So you, assuming you have been set up and you're using the radio at some point uh, with a certain amount of power, uh, let's assume you want to change the band or the frequency and that you need to retune your amplifier. So there you have to push the multi button to bring up the power setting and dial down the power to 10 watts or so, because you don't want to hurt the amplifier. And then push the uh, tuner button to turn off the tuner if you were using it. Change the mode to CW if you're using another mode. Hold down your CW key while adjusting the tuner. And, uh, you know, then you're done. Then you have to reverse that whole process to set it back the way you were. So that makes uh, contesting really interesting if you want to change your frequency and your antenna is not flat across the range that you want to change it. Or if you want to change bands and, and uh, have to uh, manually change bands on the amplifier as well. So what's the solution? This is a picture of the circuit. It's really simple. It's on that QRZ website and the uh, uh, attributions are there. Um, of course, this is just for simulation, this part. And there's another simulation over here, which I didn't copy uh, for the uh, measurements. And they show a uh, graph of what this thing actually does. Okay, the parts are all pretty common. The only sort of semi-common part is this plug that goes into the ICOM 7300. However, it's available. Uh, and I should mention right here before I go on that the technical details are well listed on that uh, QRZ slide and or QRZ forum. And uh, so I'm not going to go into that here. I didn't memorize it anyway. All right. So the only semi, like I didn't know where to get it when I first wanted to do this. So I went down to B&E and they have them. Yeah, go in past the front door there, go to the end of the aisle, turn right, and go back up the first aisle, and they have these things. And the only thing that I was worried about was, was this the right size? Because I didn't know for sure, but it looked right, and it turned out to be the right size. And they have two different sizes. And if you've never worked with the Molex connectors, and I had in the past, but it had been a long time, yeah, yeah, they have pins that go into holes in plug or socket, and uh, the pins that come in two styles, a female and a male pin, and of course they mate with each other. And this package contains uh, two complete sets, two, two uh, plugs, two sockets, and the pins to go with each. And the little, okay, can you guys see the little white ball on the, on the right edge of the screen here? That's uh, 
a pin remover and it's sold separately. That can come in handy if you put the wrong pin in a place. So anyway, and that's the working uh, URL is where they're in blue. So now we get to the box, the solution. And first the attributions. On a, I've talked to Jerry about doing this. And we only live a little ways apart, like a two minute drive. Um, he ended up giving me this box and a cable and, and an LED and resistors to the project. I went down to b and &E and bought the uh, uh, capacitors and the diodes. And actually we traded LEDs because I, I had one and he put a different one in. And then we built a test cable uh, and tested the box. And the reason that Jerry ended up building this for me because my hand's too shaky to work in such a small area. All right, uh, and it worked. There's the inside of the box and you can see that it was a pretty, pretty small area. If I go back to the slide, uh, that's a little over two inches by a little over half an inch. For you guys that grew up in Canada, I don't know what that is. Now you have some metric is there five, five and a half uh, centimeters and roughly what, half a centimeter, centimeter. Before I go, I'll just show you that website. There's the first part of that website. And there's the picture that I took off of it. And, and he describes what the pins do here and the interaction between the pins. Okay, so there's a switch and there's a little of these there. So I, I have my uh, 7300 sitting on a wooden pedestal kind of thing that has a hollow center that I built for it. And I just put Velcro on the back of this thing and pasted it up across the side of that. And so I push the switch up to turn it on, push the switch down to turn it off. When it's on, the tuner goes automatically. Uh, SWR does, no longer shows. The rig puts out a carrier at about 10 watts. And I don't have to do anything else except tune the amplifier because also keys the amplifier. 